Okay, so let me tell you what is our focus today. And also, first thing first, let me introduce myself. My name is Shalise. In case you don't know who am I, then you just take out your nota and then flip to the cover page. Yeah, that's me. Okay, all right. So our focus today would mainly on the technique parts. Okay, the technique parts are. So I will go through with you a full set of the model paper. I will just go through with you on the format first. Then after that, only we move on to the model paper. Start up with kertas dua, lepas tu kertas satu. Okay. But as for the kertas satu, the multiple choice question, objective and a couple of hands, I will not go through this with you one by one because that one you can do your own practice and then to double check the answer from the QR codes. Or maybe you can just go uh, to the website, TDC Education's website, and then to get the answer sheets. Okay. All right. So for this one, we have... I check out the Denma tense, which is a science and technology. <gasps> Thank you, Adrian. Thank you so much, this guy. Uh. Okay, so this is a QR code here. So for all the answers and the uh, karangans, chanta karangans, you may get it over here after the seminar. After the seminar is over, we'll post everything here. And that, uh, okay. This is your format, but I need you to do me a favor, which means the tempo ujana, which is the period for your exams, I mean like durations, I should say. This one help me to devour it first because we have made some mistake over here. For your kertas satu by right, it should be one and a half hours. And then kertas dua is about one hour. So this one is one and a half hour. And this one is just one hour. Okay, if the ballet this one out, then after that. For your kertas satu, you will have three sections. Bahagian A, bahagian B, dan juga bahagian C. Dalam bahagian A, yang ni objektif aneka pilihan, maksudnya multiple choice question. It is just about A, B, C, okay? A, B, C only. So for this multiple choice question, that was split into three parts. Actually, I should say it like two parts. Lah, because system bahasa, this is like the grammar. For example, uh, after the imbohan kan, imbohan I, you cannot have kata sendi. And then pada setiap hari ke, di setiap hari, it should be pada setiap hari. So it's all about the tata bahasa and also vocabulary. For the first few questions, it's about the vocabulary one, kosa kata. All right. So this is the system bahasa. Pertikan umum and komsas is quite similar. Pertikan umum, it means that they will give you a pertikan, a normal passage that they extract from the, uh, maybe from the internet or maybe from the DPP. They want bahasa dan pustaka. And then for komsas, which is, you are from three, so by right, you should know. For BM, you will have satu buku text, textbook, and then one is the novel, the booklets, one is novel, the other booklets is a concept, okay? That one includes the saja, the shail, the puisi, chapan dramas, everything's in a small booklet. So, that would split into three parts, and then in the questions exam, they will have two different types. One type is like, they will focus on the system bahasa, and five questions from the concept. The other one in which, this is a system bahasa, Four questions is from the pertikan sepumbu. It's just like a pemahamat. And then another three questions is for the komsas. Okay, from the komsas. So the maximum questions you will get for the komsas is just five. Hanya lima soalan saja. Okay, this is the ABCD part. Huh? Then when it comes to bahagian B. Bahagian B, this is a subjective question. Same things that will have system bahasa. The system bahasa that they will focus on this part is the kesalahan ijaan, the spelling error, and also kesalahan Bahasa, which is like what I told you just now. Pada setiap hari ke, di setiap hari. Pada setiap hari lah. Because when we will use di untuk tempat. Di sekolah, di rumah, for a place. Huh? So this what you will have is a kesalahan ejaan dan juga kesalahan bahasa. Later we will go through the questions for this one. Let's come to the pemahaman pertikat. Same thing, there is one question for the pemahaman. They will give you a passage and that every time when you do pemahaman pertikan, please make sure you go through the question first, uh, not to read through the passage first because you will need to go through the question to understand the requirements of each question. Then only you go back and read the pertikan. Or else uh, when you start to read on the passage, then you read the question, you will go against, go back to your passage again and to look for the answer and then come against at the question. So it's kind of a waste of time. Understand the requirements of a question. Then only you go through the particular. Novel. Okay, for the novel in today's class, I will go through with you is like the techniques. Whenever you answer novel, what is the sentence that you need to include in the answer? 
or else your teachers have the right not to give you any single marks in this part. I will not go through the novel with you as in like the synopsis and the jalan cerita. Oh yeah, guys, if you got your June notes, you will know that next week, which is like June week one, we will learn about novel, the Tawanan Commander Concursus, okay? So I will go through that one in the class, starting from tomorrow, can I? And then, the next part, the last one is the bahagian C. Bahagian C, ya, pemindahan maklumat, ya, if you do remember, actually the government has changed the format. Yeah, Kisha, I'm waiting for you. I, I should not say I'm waiting for you. Like, I'm like just now, I got talked to Adrian about, about you. Okay, so for this part, bahagian C. <laughs> Sorry. Bahagian C, if you do notice and remember, actually the government has changed the format for your exam, right? Because last time you will have like, two questions and then these two questions that will either be like ringkasan, rumusan and ulasan and during the exam that two questions you just choose one to do right but right now they change it they change it in what pattern up oh wait uh, they change it in the patterns in which in which tingkatan satu they just focus on the ringkasan Tingkatan dua, they focus on ringkasan and rumusan and you is ringkasan and ulasan. So you just need to focus on the ringkasan and ulasan. Congratulations, you get rid of rumusan, but just this year. Why? Because next year when you go to the SPM level, the SPM format, rumusan is a compulsory question for you. Okay? Give me a moment, Zah. What's happening? Okay, right. So let's continue. So sorry for that. All right. So over here, what we'll be <laughs> what we'll be doing for bahagian C, I will go through with you on the techniques for ulasan. What is the terms that you cannot include in ulasan, and what is the terms that you have to include in ulasan, and what is easy to write and easy to write. And then for thing, uh, for the ringkasan, I will go through with you on the patterns of it, and also one by one each line to teach you how to identify which is your easy and why is it not your easy, okay? And then for the Kertas Dua, Kertas Dua, this is mainly on your karangan. So for Kertas Dua, the karangan, uh, bahagian A, this is a short easy, karangan pendek, okay? Karangan pendek, this one is super duper easy, very easy, it's like free marks for you. Compulsory questions, you cannot choose. It is like fill in the blank, easy tempat kosong. Bahagian B, you will need to choose among these three questions, they will give you pilihan choices. Three questions, you just pick one. Please do not finish all. Right? You've got no time to finish all. But whenever there is selection, there is choices for you, meaning to say you will need to analyze the question. So I will teach you the techniques for you to analyze the question and also the techniques when you do penapuluan, easy and penutup. For karangan, mainly I will go through with you on the technique today. Okay? All right. Any questions regarding to your formats you want to clarify? If yes, you may talk to me in the chat box. If no, then we shall move on. Okay, let's continue. And you will talk to me in the chat box. I will not bite you. I will not eat you. Okay, so relax, relax. Okay, let's start. Hi, Kian. It's okay. Adrian. Hey, Adrian Kishaf. Jaga a pizza, okay? Jaga a pizza. This is a chat to everyone up, and this is seminar. Okay, come, let's continue. For this one, Kertas Dua, Kertas Dua for this one, this is the bahagian. Hey, why should I say this is very easy? It is because that this is the so in the black, easy tempat kosong. Okay, easy tempat kosong. Ah. So look at this one. What you need to take note is that the word limits. 50 until 80. Minimum is 50, maximum is 80. Okay, this is minimum and maximum. How many paragraphs you need to write for your uh, bahagian A? This one you need to write about like one, three, or five paragraphs also can. Okay? Hmm. Yeah, because there is two types. Carry, there is two types. It's either, uh, it's either the, it will be like this way or it, it will be some things like the ulasan. So I will go through the ulasan and go through this one with you because there is two types for the karangan respond to the karangan pendek. 
Then you follow your teacher if your teacher mentions about that. Yes, you need to do that. <laughs> yeah, so what happened is 50 is minimum, 80 is maximum. How many paragraphs? You may do in three way, one, three, or five. But you need to depend on your teachers. Huh? If your teachers mentions that one paragraph, then it's one. Three, then it's three. Then five, then it's five. You need to follow that. And to this, we'll do in the three patterns. Okay. I will mix. I mean, like I would choose in the middle one. So if it's one, we just lump sums everything. What if it's three and five? What you need to do is you will have one is what we call pengenalan. Pengenalan is the introduction. I will not call this as pendahul one. Why? It's because that for your pendahul ones, you will have uh, three to five sentences. But then for this one, due to the words limit, the words constraint, huh? that's why we will only have one sentence is enough. Then after the pengenalan, what we have is the EC. Then after that is the penutup. Okay, after that is the penutup. So for this one is how we do for your karangan responsible hearts, which is the karangan pendek. Okay, why should I say this one is very easy? It is because it's just about to in the blanks. Let's imagine that your exam gives you some things like this. And then your minimum is 50, maximum is 80. So they already give you a lot of words. You just need to add in the kata hubung. And also penanda wacana. To make your sentence smooth. And then just to combine the sentence. And sometimes you might need to add in the subject, which is the wata. Full stop. This is what you need to do for the karangan response to the Provided that your exam come out in this way. Lah. Because I know there's quite a lot of Catholic students. And yeah, congratulations, you are in that school. So there is a probability that your school will come out something like this. Or they will give you like few points, then you need to pull right back. That one is also considered karangan pendek because of the words limit. But that one is kind of similar with the ulasan because you will need to provide your own idea since the words limit is 50 until 80. But the difference is that for karangan pendek, isi tersirat, isi tersirat which is like your own idea. For this one, uh, isi you will have two, isi tersurat and also isi tersirat. Isi tersurat, which is the information that provided maklumat yang diberikan dalam soalan, like this. Everything here is the isi tersurat. Isi tersurat is your own idea. So the main difference of these two, ulasan and also the karangan pendek, is that isi tersurat is not necessary in the karangan pendek. Okay? It is not necessary. Yeah, <laughs> but then for ulasan, it is necessary and compulsory. This one. Let's imagine your karangan already get to this. So you just easy tempat kosong. You do not need to add in your own idea. Okay, that one is the tersurat one. Okay, like this. So it depends on, but if you are in Catholic, then it depends on how the questions come out. Sometimes you will need to include this one as well. Okay. Chill, 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 my guys. Okay, so now, if it's like this one, you just need to add in the kata kubung, penanda wacana, and also what's the watak, right? So, what I will do today is that I will split into three paragraphs. Pengenalan isi and the penutup. And then after that, first thing first is I will split into three based on the isi tersurat. This would be the pengenalan. And this is the penutup. Okay, right. Look at the pengenalan up. Over here, I would just say like, Pertandingan Inovasi Pada Peringkat Kebangsaan. And as a program tahunan, you may just add it. Pertandingan Inovasi Pada Peringkat Kebangsaan ini merupakan program tahunan. Full stop. Okay? Then you continue. Dikenakan yuran penyataan. This is the easy. Siapakah yang dikenakan yuran penyataan? Perserta ataupun murid-murid yang ingin menyertaikan Dikenakan yuran penyataan. So, this is the subtract. Okay? So, this is like a watak, a person. Let me show you. Okay, what I need you to do right now is I need you to look at your electronic devices. Whether you are using laptop, whether you are using tablets or your handphones to enter to this Zoom. And also, either you go and find out the screenshots functions or you take out your phone and then to take a screenshot of that, okay? 
because for today's seminar is just two hour seminar so i cannot go through with you all the questions all the questions and then ask you to like copy it out is kind of a waste of time out huh? we will do it during the class as like sentence by sentence how do we construct during the class so today i will project with you the sample so that you know how to do okay for this part up huh? actually everything that i highlighted okay everything that i highlighted is just that the terms that i add in this is like easy tempat kosong and then the rest is given in the questions, which is the easy tersurat. So only the highlighted part is the kata hubung penanda wacana to make it fill in the blank. Yeah, just fill in the blanks only. Okay, so that's why I say it's very easy for the part A. So basically for this part A, you want to get like eight marks and above is not hard because it's super easy. Okay, super easy for this one. So you take a picture for your karangan pendek over here all right anything you want to clarify for the karangan pendek because i would like to move on to review on the long exit the karangan's umur yeah so you just add in the penanda wacana kata hubung and also watak full stop fill in the blank uh, easy tempat kosong and every time uh, in bm paper uh, whenever there is a paragraph thingy perangan please make sure that you remember this the pata perkataan, you will need to include that regardless of this is a short essay, long essay, ulasan, ringkasan, whatsoever. As long as it's in a paragraph, then you will need to write down the words. How many words the word count? Okay. Boleh. Kalau boleh, kita teruskan. Boleh. Okay, kita teruskan. Let's move on. Look at the next one. Oh, yeah, Fiona, you asked a very good question. Okay, come, let me explain some things out. The gasnya, it means like in short, okay, in short. So what happened is like, chef, no need to copy, ah. I told you to take a picture, ha? because ah, it means in short. So for this one, ah, the gasnya, tuntasnya, they are the same, okay? The gasnya, tuntasnya, it means like in short, lah. okay? Then after that, for this one, for the first paragraph, do you need to leave about two finger space for that? Okay, listen up. Actually, in general, for your SPMs, whenever you are doing a paragraph thingy, the first, not just the first paragraph, for all the paragraph, you will need to leave two finger space. But I know that some of your school teachers that will tell you for the first paragraph, you no need to leave the space for it. So if your school teachers mentions this to you already, then you follow their pattern. Why? Because they are the ones who marks your paper. So you will need to follow their requirements, their pattern. For example, just like selain itu, how many words is counted? Selain itu, it's counted as one or two. It's counted as one or two. Okay. So far, Catholic students give me a very standardized answer. Okay, so far for Catholic, uh, it gives me a very standardized answer, which is like selain itu, disamping itu, all this is counted as one only. But I have a real life scenario in Kajang. Uh. In Kajang, what happened is that even they are from the same school, they are from the same school, but just difference of young teacher, their teachers give them different answers. Selain itu, some of them counted as one, some of them counted as two. Yeah. So what happens and what you need to do, so how, right? Go and double check with the teachers that mark your paper. Every year, double check with your BM teachers if it's a different person because they are the ones who mark your paper. So you need to follow their patterns, their rules, their requirements. But I can tell you, in SPM, in general, all the penanda wacana, all the kata mashmok, for example, kata mashmok, jam tangan, okay, matahari, all this, it's counted as one word only. Okay, it's counted as one word only. Can I? All right. Yes, correct. If it's in SPM, then all counted as one. But then if it's in your school, you need to go and clarify with your school teachers because they are the ones who mark your paper. Okay, so this is how the how the how the games begins. Okay, how the games carry on. Remember that. Even you are from the same school, but different teachers, you need to clarify with the ones who mark your paper. Okay. All right, look at this one. So we finish up for that one. So for your Bahagian B, Bahagian B, you will have three questions, right? So for these three questions, you will need to choose either one. 
pilih satu daripada tiga soalan tidak kurang daripada 180 pata perkataan. Okay, guys, remember for the pata perkataan, so remember how many words you will need to write for your karangan or not. Every time I remind us, I remind you guys. Although the question just tell you exactly, although the question just tell you about not less than 180, but please remember you will need to write 250 until 350. And one thing, 250 is the standard I set for my former students. 300 is from two. And you guys, you are tingkatan tiga from three. So by right, you would need to be able to write until 350. Meaning to say your standards right now should be able to write up to 300 until 350. Chill, Kians, you can do that. Why? You see, you are now from three already. Ah. Half of the years already gone. Ah. Okay, lah. I... I and I just like included June, okay? Half of the year we got. Next year, you are from four. So for from four, the requirement is that minimum is two, it minimum is 350, maximum is 500, okay? When you go to SPM level, minimum is 350, maximum is 500. If right now your pattern is just keep it on, teacher, not less than 180 ma. So I read 220 la. I'm still within the loop, but I still within the requirement. Yes. But right now you read up to 220 only. Next year, when you go to Hong Kong, after like maybe school reopens um two and three months, then you will have your exam. In these two and three months, can you boost up to at least 350 and you are writing some things with point and not pointless and not bullshit things? That's the thing. So right now, please train up yourself at least 300 to 350 or else next year you would be really gg.com, okay? So your standards is this one. Remember. Oh my God, my dear, tidak kurang daripada. It means like not less than, my dear. Not kang kang 180, not ngam ngam 180. Ah. You need to more than that, my dear. Okay, need to more than 180 ah. Yes. Gigi, oh, I tell you no. Okay, more than 180. Then funny lah, you guys. Okay, the next one. The next one. How many paragraphs you, you need to write for this karangan? Six paragraph. Enam perangan. Enam perangan, which means you will need to set up it. Oh my god, I still very... I still feel it's very funny. Pendahuluan. Isi penutup. Meaning to say you will have four isi. Five can. Okay, five can. Okay, some of the teachers are. Um, when you are in tingkatan satu, dua, tiga, still normal. But when you go to four and five, quite a lot of teachers that will tell you it's five per one. Okay. Why is this I will tell you in six paragraph? You see, if you write six paragraph, meaning to say you have four, you see, right? So you can like average distribute your words, the limit, okay, the words to all these four points, okay? So that you write guys for four points. But then if you only write five paragraph, meaning to say you will have three EC only. So you need to elaborate more for each EC in order for you to reach up to 350 words, okay? If you are able to elaborate, yes, you may do so. Because some of the school teachers, when you go to upper forms, that would really require you to write five paragraphs, which means like three EC, because they want you to elaborate more, to use more term, explain it more. So if you can do it, can. Okay, if you have faith, you if you have confidence to do it, you may continue with five paragraph. I will not stop you. Cannot. But please don't just keep on repeating the same point, but in different sentence structure. Then that is pointless. No point. You cannot get much from that. Okay, so remember. Uh? All right, so the next one. You know that six paragraph, you know that's 300 and 350. This is your standard. That the next part. We have three questions here, so I will go through the questions with you. But first thing first, every time when we do karangan, since there is three questions, we will need to go on an analysis. And then what is the techniques for us to do the analysis? It's the TKKF. All right, guys, do you still remember what is TKKF? Ah, to prove that whether you pay attention in class or not. Ah? So what is TKKF? Adrian, you sure? 
KK is correct. Yeah, Fiona? Yes, correct. Yeah, I think correct. Yes, yes. Yes, Kian. Oh, correct. Yes, Dylan. Whoa, Dylan is here. Yes, everyone's got it up. So, TKKF you are refers to. Wait, Dylan is here. Ryan, Ryan here or not? Is he Ryan not here? Ryan is not here. So, the T is a topic. K is the kata kunci. And F is the format. This is the TKKF, okay? So, why I never call this as a tajo? It is because tajo is basically the combinations of your topic and the kata kunci. Why I never call it as a tema? Tema is like a big picture like that. For example, a gejala social, this is a tema. Then under, inside this gejala social, we will have like bully cyber, merokok, lumba haram, vandalismo. So, this is the topic. So, tema and tajo. It's like a big picture like that. Tema is a big picture. Tajo is a combination of the kata kunci and also topic. Can I? So right now, by using the topic and kata kunci format, how do we analyze that? I'll give you an example. Like right now, let's say you need to write an, write an essay about cara cara untuk memupuk amalan membaca. Okay, this is the example. I always give it to you. Huh? So kata kunci, it means the easy. What you need to write for the content. So basically, it will be like the fuck. So, uh, usaha, kesan, keburukan, this is like the main things, main issue, the keywords. Kesan, regardless, regarding what, okay? So, cara-cara untuk memupuk amalan membaca, cara-cara it will be the kata kunci, the keywords. Amalan membaca is the topic. Cara-cara about what? Faktor-faktor regarding what? Kesan about? About regarding that thing is your topics already. So for format, it usually will give you three marks. Formats, they are always the same. Surat kiriman rasmi, surat kiriman cita rasmi, laporan spring channel, all this. Actually, for format, you just need to spend one time to memorize it and understand all the formats. Okay, spend one time to really go and understand. Then after that, every time before exam, you just like revise again, then you will remember. Because your format is always the same up until you form five. It will never be like, let's say, the Surat Kiriman Rasmi, you need to start up all the things like the uh, address, everything is on the left-hand side. This is Surat Kiriman Rasmi, all right? Takans, when you go to form five, the SPM level, then suddenly they tell you, no, Surat Kiriman Rasmi, it will change to everything start at the right-hand side. No, it can never be. The format's always the same until from five. So you just need to spend one time to memorize or finish. Okay? So you look at this one up. Look at the first question. Daya creativity dan inovasi dalam kalangan murid kini menjadi antara keutamaan dalam pembelajaran di sekolah. Bincangkan usaha-usaha yang boleh dilakukan untuk memupuk after form 5, you don't need to memorize the formats already, but creativity that innovasi dalam kalangan murid. Okay, so first thing first, may I have the synonym for usaha-usaha? What is the synonym for usaha-usaha? Any idea? What is the synonym for usaha-usaha? Sebab is faktor. Sebab is reason. Langkah, very good. Langkah, yes. Chiri, no. Chiri is not. Chiri is perbatakan. It's different. Okay. So, you will have langkah. You will have kaeda, cara, tindakan, exactly. Pendekatan. Okay, you will have all this. Yes, so this is a synonym. Chara is the method, the weight. Chiri, this is like a characteristic of some things. Like chara chara untuk memupuk pemimpin. Then maybe you will need to have some uh, cerama or some campaigns or some programs. Melatih. Melatih kemahiran kepimpinan to train up the leadership skill. This is chara. Chiri-chiri seorang pemimpin 
which means that this person's what is the characteristics of a leader? Uh, this person then must have like a uh, leadership skill, kemahiran kepimpinan, and then berfikiran terbuka, berpandangan jauh. So this is the chiri chiri. What is the characteristic that they need to have? Yeah, so that the difference of chiri and chara, ah, my dear. All right, so look at this one. Usaha-usaha yang boleh dilakukan untuk memupuk daya creativity. Daya is means ability. Ability to become creative and ability to become more inov inovasi dalam kalangan murid. So for this one, it's very obvious. Huh? The kata kunci is the usaha-usaha. What is the methods? What is the efforts? What is the way that you need to be carried out? Yang boleh dilakukan untuk memupuk daya creativity. This one is the topic. So we will have a Kata kunci here, and then a topic here. Is there any formats for this one? They just ask you to bincangkan. It means just to discuss only. So they never ask you to prepare a text for like speech, ucapan ke, uh, syarahan ke, or maybe like article rencana, or maybe the letter, surat rasmi ke tidak rasmi. They never mentions anything. So karangan like this, uh, we will conclude them as karangan fakta or karangan pendapat. It is about your opinions only. Okay, so next one. Dalam kepantasan jaringan komunikasi, ada communications network ah, masyarakat perlu seiring dengan kemajuan teknologi. Seiring is means like a long bit. Our societies need to improve along with the technology. Tulis sebuah rencana tentang kepentingan membina generasi kritik ke arah pembangunan negara maju. Over here. That is a format, and this format is very obvious. What they ask you to do? They ask you to do the brain channel. Brain channel in English, we call it an article. Okay, we call it an article. What is the format for brain channel? Whenever there is a format, there is three marks allocated for the format. So, I extracted this one from the answer. You will get it in the QR code later or the TTC website. Okay, look at this one up. So this one basically is the formats for your articles. If it's for article and channel, you need to have a tajuk. Tajuk for the article, tajuk for the passage. Then what, uh, who is the author, the author name? This is a tajuk, this is the author name. Something like this, you will be able to get three marks already. Okay, and then now, uh, did you notice one thing uh, over here? Uh, for the tajuk, right, or the first alphabets, you will need to like capital letter it, okay, for rupesa, except for kata hubung and also kata sendi, except for these two. Meaning to say, for all the tajuk, for rupesa, but then pengecualian exceptions, Kata hubung, kata sendi. Kata hubung is like the linkage words lah. Dan, atau, lalu, sambil. Kata sendi, ke, dari, daripada. Okay? This term, you do not need to make it a capital letter. Zah. Remember, this is the format for tajuk. As long as your karangans require a tajuk, then this is the things that you will need to remember that. Okay? Then the next one is the author name. Only in exam, you just write the full name. Okay? Full name, same thing, the first Alphabets with capital letter. Okay. Then after that, next one. For this questions, which one is our kata kunci? Kepentingan. Kepentingan is means important. So basically, it is same as manfaat, fa'ida, benefits. Teacher, I thought this is important. Why we need to write out the benefits of it? Because you need to understand. Why is it important? It is because that it will bring its benefits to you. It will bring benefits to you. Mendatangkan faedah ataupun manfaat. That's why it is important. So whenever you see kepentingan in your question, which means they want you to write the benefits. Okay? Kepentingan tentang apa? Membina generasi kreatif dan inovatif. So this one is the topic. Kata kunci. Topic. Format. We finish analyze question two. So look at question three. So for question three, bersempena projek taman saiz di sekolah yang melibatkan semua ahli persatuan bla bla bla. Kam anda diminta menulis satu laporan lengkap. Tulis teks laporan anda. 
So laborant, it means report. Report is also one kind of the format. And that's what is the formats for laborant. Let me show you. Okay. This is the report for your laborant in which you will need to start up with the tajuk. Okay. Tajuk, remember this one you need to underline. Huh? Not really. Not, okay, a little bit similar, but not really like the letters. Maybe you can say informal letter. Hmm. A little bit, but then informal letters, you do not need the tajuk words. Formal letters only you need it. But formal letter, you will have address. So this is the place where you would write the karangan. Okay, you write your karangan here. Then after that, this is at the beginning. Uh, before you end, I, I mean like after you write your pendahuluan, isi penutup, then you will need to write like prepare by who, your signature, your full name, and then your position. Okay, the title. Then after that, which school, date, full stop. This is the format. So if it's in this case, uh, the format, everything here would be three marks. So you see, if it's a ring channel, uh, only two marks, then you get three marks. But if Laporex, you need to write so many things. What if a Surat Kiriman Rasmi, then you have a lot. So you need to write like address and then gelarans untuk orang yang kamu and up. Yeah, like that, okay? So that's why if it's a if a threat remit me address and that's also included on the papers that you want to send on the email, I mean like the message to the, the, the letter to. So that's the format here. After that, what is the kata kunci for this one and also the topic? The topic for this one is a project. Because your laporat is about the project Taman Science Disakola, what you can include in the laporat, maybe like the activity included in this project or the at the end, what happens there? So this is how we analyze the question. So we finish up. We finish to analyze all these questions. Then right now, the next one. Teacher, then how should we choose the question? That is three questions, right? Okay. If you know the formats patterns for Laporan, and you know the formats patterns for Rain Channel, basically all these three questions you can choose. Then you can look at the cutter punches and the topic, whichever you are interested and you have the confidence to do it. But if you do know Rinchana, you do know Laporan, then you've got only one option, which is the first one. Okay, teacher, the format mark it's just three marks, ma. If I really do know that, it's okay, la. I just let it go three marks only, ma. All right, in your uh, exam schema, the schema, yes, this is just about three marks, but you see. It also does include the impressions and perceptions marks towards you. Let's say, if your teachers mark the paper, and this is a ring channel format, you never spread out the formats because you don't know. Then your teachers will know that these students don't really prepare well because these students do know about the format. With this kind of thinking and mindset, your teachers would carry on to mark your paper. So what happened is I cannot tell, but God bless you. Okay, so that's why I say, if you want to write the karangans with format, make sure you know the format as well. Okay, Kenna, until here, in conclusions, if you don't know, then don't choose, we will choose this one. Up until here, can follow up? All right, then the next one. The next one I want to talk to you is the techniques for the penahuluan, EC, and also penutup. So I will use one question as a base, as a fundamentals for you to refer. So this question, the first one, I will use it as a base for you to refer. So for the pendahuluan, EC and the penutup, the technique I use, okay, I will give you a sample according to this question. All right, so remember, kata kunci is usaha, and then the topic is memuput daya creativity dan inovasi. Can I? Next. All right. So here is the one that I want you to take pictures. 
please don't just copy, copy, copy. I need you to understand the concept of the technique because this technique you may apply up until you form five in the SPM. If you know very well about the technique, understand it, then you know the applications. Application is the most important thing. If you know how to apply, then you will realize that karangan is just so easy. Okay, I give you a big picture first. The big picture in which for the pendahuluans. Okay, guys, for pendahuluans, do you still remember the techniques that we use? Four sentences. You ask yourself a question and then answer. And which four questions? Exactly, Fiona. T Y E K. Okay, next one. E C. How about E C? It start with S, remember? S H Y E K. Lastly, about the penutup. Yes, Adrian. Okay, I will add up one thing, K C H. Because every time when I never write the K, my students are always forgot. Okay. So I move it down a bit. T Y E K S H Y E K and K C H. How do you understand this and how do you play with the technique? All right. Remember that our EC, I mean, our kata kunci is the usaha usaha, and the topic is memupuk daya creativity dan inovasi dalam kalangan semua. All right. So let's start the pendahuluan by using T Y E K. I will show you examples together. Yeah, give me a moment now. Give me a moment. Okay. Let me show you technology. Let me open up it. Hey, don't copy, guys. Take picture, okay? Take picture, like I told you just now. Screenshots and then take pictures, okay? If after that, you want to copy that in your nota, up to you, okay? If after that, you want to copy on your nota, because you get so fast, again. okay? This one, take picture, then you may copy that, okay? If you want to do so. But right now, take pictures, because there is time country now. These people are driving. Adrian's, I know. I know. Okay, come, let's continue. But now, who want the TYEK? Topic Y effect and also the kata kunci. Uh, so, the first question, you need to jelaskan topic. The jelaskan topic here, explain. Uh, I'm not asking you to give me the definitions of uppercut into daya creativity that innovasi. Tak perlu. Why? Because if your teachers need the info, I mean, like the maksud, the makna, the definition, Mereka boleh merujuk kepada kamus ataupun Google, okay? So you do not need to give them the definitions, but you need to explain in terms of what is a phenomena, okay? What is the keadaan, what is the situations, what is the phenomena towards the topic? Let's say for this one, jelaskan topik tentang apa? Daya kreativiti dan inovasi dalam masyarakat kita. So, this is the first part. Dalam meniti arus modernisasi ini, this one it means that along with this very modern pathway, okay, in this very modern trend. So whenever your karangan is about development, about technology, you may start out with this, okay. Pemupukan, which means that the developments and nurtures of the daya creativity dan inovasi telah menjadi satu topik yang hangat dalam kalangan murid. So this is the phenomena. It means that, okay, this daya creativity dan inovasi it's a very hot topic. The situation to stop. Then the next one. Jelaskan sebab berlakunya keadaan tersebut. Why is this a hot topic? Why everyone's like take notes on it and also uh, look at this issue? Why? This until here. Hal ini dikatakan demikian kerana, guys, please remember. Hal ini dikatakan demikian kerana, it should come in a setup. I know a lot of um, reference book that might just write how any 
the Mikiat, how any Kerana. But the most accurate one is these five terms come together. How any dikatakan the Mikiat Kerana. Yes, this is the most accurate ones. Remember that. The other hal ini kerana hal ini demikian. Okay, yang paling betul ini. Er, daya kreativiti dan inovasi. Yes, one set one. Merupakan salah satu elemen. Elements in English they are the same. It's just with a T for English up. Yang amat mustahak dalam perkembangan kendiri. Perkembangan kendiri is means that your self development. Guys, this is not typo ah. You have this term kandiriya. Then teachers, what is the difference of kandiri and sendiri? Basically, kandiri and sendiri, they are the same meanings. Not much difference. There is only one. Which means, before kandiri, you will need to have an object. Um, object, subject, I should say. Okay? Have a subject. What does this mean? Perkembangan kandiri is means self-development. If you say self-reflection, reflexi kandiri, you need to have some things in front, the subject in front. Yes, then only you can use kendiri. If you say, just now my form treats, God, when people give me an example. Saya membuat craft tangan itu kendiri, can I teach it? Cannot, because itu is not the subject. Saya membuat craft tangan itu sendiri. Okay. Mm. No, Kian, this one cannot. Okay, why not? This one subject basically will refer to something that is like, Positive and that is a point. Like in English, you will have like self-reflections, uh, self-development, but you will not have self-food. <laughs> Isn't it? Okay. So that's the reason. Huh? All right. So let's move on. Seperti menjadi individu lebih berdaya saing. So here's the reason. The reason is that why is it becomes a hot topic? Because it's very important in our self-development so that it will make us become someone that is high in compatibility. Okay, we can compete with other people. Berdaya saying it means that you have the abilities to compete with other people. Okay, so this is why. Then after that, in fact, jelaskan kesan jika topik diabaikan. Diabaikan is means like ignore. What happens if this being ignored in your society. Okay, so you see uh, the effect here, kesan. Sekiranya pendidikan berkaitan dengan pencengkilan daya kreativiti dan inovasi diabaikan, then what happened? For sure, next child, negara kita akan dipandang serok. Mengapa dipandang serok? Kerana golongan belia kita tidak dapat bersaing dengan negara lain. If we never put attention on the diet creativity that innovacy, then for sure our countries will be looked down because the people in the countries that couldn't compete with other people. That's why the other country will look down on us. Okay, so this is the kesan. Lastly, kata kunci, salin tajo. Salin tajo, remember I told you the tajo is the combinations of your kata kunci and topic. Our kata kunci here is the usaha. Topic is the uh, men, men, dilakukan untuk memupuk daya kreativiti dan inovasi. So, we just combine. Just the root. Just the root, it means oleh itu, guys. Just the root, it means oleh itu. Just the root, kita perlu meneliti. Usaha, usaha, this one is the kata kunci. Then, after that. Yang boleh dilakukan untuk memupuk daya kreativiti dan inovasi. This one is your topic. Lantaran sama dengan keran. Okay, lantaran sama dengan kerana. So, if you want to say only itu, you may also use lantaran itu. Lantaran pemuda hadapan maksa, pemudi tiang negara. This is a peribahasa lah. The peribahasa is just telling you that, okay, teenage golongan belia, they are future pillars of the country. So, this is how we do the TY. Okay, very simple, right? If you know about the technique, then you know how to apply TY. Okay, always ask yourself questions regarding TY. Okay. All right, so for this one, please take a picture and then we shall move on to the easy. Take a picture, uh, five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Ta-da, finish. So next one. So fast. Yes, Tim Heng can. Lantaran can. If you want to use it same as Ola Itu, then Lantaran Itu. Lantaran same as Karana. Can I? All right, move on. A 
okay, look at the SHYEK, the EC. SHYEK refers to like the EC, how wide in fact, and the conclusive. The K here is not kata kunci, but the K here is about what? It's about the conclusive. All right. So you see, our kata kunci is the usaha usaha, which is what is the way, right? Okay. Every time when we talk about what is the way, what is the method, for sure we need to have a wata, someone to carry out. Okay, teacher, how am I supposed to know which wata, which character? How am I supposed to get the character? Of course, I will tell you, you need to think, oh, teacher, I also need to think, uh, any guideline, uh, any for, any things for me to refer? Uh? Yes. Okay, this one you copied out. Whenever you need a wata, use this pyramid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So ugly one. Whenever you need a wata character, please use this pyramid. This is a seven layers pyramid. Everyone you remember, Tisha, you remember. I think I got teach you all before in class. Any idea? Okay, come look at this one up. Kind of. Whenever you need a character, the first one we will always refer to Divi. So Divi, it means like the individual. Okay, then the second ones we will refer to Kaluaga. So when it's come to Kaluagas, we always refer to Ibu Bapa. Then the next one, we will always refer to Rakan. Okay, but for Rakan friends, uh, I need to remind you all, uh, whenever we talk about the Rakan, uh, so sorry that your friends will always refer to um, bad friends, negative friends that will give you bad influence. For example, when your karangan is about Morocco, vandalism, all this kegiatan negative, then your friends will definitely cheat it, right? Because if it's for facto, then you will always have a point, it's what we call Pengaruh daripada rakan sebaya. Okay, bad influence from your friends. Remember that. You need to understand one thing. You are very pure and innocent. You are very good. So you are not the ones that would commit all these negative, uh, negative activities and negative issue. But you got influenced by your friends. Your friends influence you. Hey, yeah, address. Let's come together. Let's form thing. Okay, you don't dare. Like this one. That's why this is bad friends influence. Okay, so you need to remember uh, you are very pure and innocent, but it's your friend to blame. So the next one, so your raccoons will only chip in and involve whenever in a bad issue. Uh. So like membaca, menabung, gaya hidup sehat. So sorry, like your friends very busy. Okay, that they, they got no time to influence you on that. Then the next one is your pihak sekolah. After the payak sekola, we will have the media master, the media, it's like the TV stations, radio stations, all these people. After media masters, we will have the society, masyarakat. Lastly, is the government, pihak kerajaan. Okay, guys, why we never write Nagara? It is because that your country is being managed by a bunch of people. So this bunch of people, which is our government, okay, your country couldn't do anything it's because all the decisions, all the policy is done by the governments, the federal governments, okay? So, teacher, does it mean that whenever we write a state that requires a wata, I can only choose from here? No. Because you will have a lot. Let's say if it's like Amalan Membaca, then you might have the publisher, pihak penerbit, you might have the author, pihak penulis, okay? Pekedai, pekedai buku. So you will have a lot. So this is just a general guideline. Whenever you need character and you got no idea, then you may refer to this seven layers pyramid, okay? Tujuh lapisan pyramid ni, All right. So finish for this one, we move on, okay? We go back to the previous one, which is the EC, because I choose Ibu Bapa. For the EC, I will show you just now, the Usaha Usaha that can be done, I choose Ibu Bapa. So we move on now. 
Okay, come back to this one. You ask yourself a question and also to write it out. So, isi utama is that I choose ibu bapa. So, ibu bapa is what they can do. Always menjadi suri teladan, but you give a more specific one. Berperanan penting. Play a very important role in sharpens the daya creativity and inovasi dalam kalangan murid. Sejak kecil, mengapa? Peribahasa. Educate them since they were young. Melentur bulu biarlah dari berbunyi. So, this is the main part in which the ibu bapa never need to sharpen the abilities of the kids since they were young. How? Bagaimanakah usaha ini dilakukan? How? How we can do so? Ah? Okay, the parents they need to give exposure to the kids. Ibu bapa perlu memberikan pendedahan kepada anak-anak tentang kepentingan kecanggihan. Bagaimana nak memberikan pendedahan membawa anak-anak melawat ke petrosites? So this is the method how they can do that. Why? Mengapakah tidakkah tersebut berkesan? Why is it they need to do so? And why is it have a good impact on it? Dengan ini, with this, with this action, mereka berpeluang, they have a chance to membuka mata. Membuka mata is not telling you that, okay, you close your eyes, ting ting, you open up your eyes. No. It means that it can open up your eyesight. You can Look at a lot of things. It can help you to increase your knowledge, enhance your knowledge. This is membuka mata. Dan memberikan cetusan idea baharu. And also you are able to think of triggers and new ideas. Serta perangsang kepada mereka agar berfikir di luar kotak. So that they are able to think out of the box to think more creatively. Okay. Can I? Okay. So this is the reasons why they need to do so. And why is it have a good impact? Efek kesan. Kesan jika melakukan tindakan tersebut secara berterusan. What if parents keep on practices and also keep on sharpens the daya creativity dan inovasi murid? Okay, then the effect is selain membuka mata, ada dan just open their eyesight, murid-murid juga disuruhkan dengan kecanggihan teknologi. They also know about how canggih the technology, how modern the technology nowadays. So that they will not shallow in their ilmu pengetahuan. Tidak cetik dalam ilmu pengetahuan seperti apa kata di bawah tempurung. Kata di bawah tempurung, it means someone that have a very shallow knowledge on that. So term menjadi lebih berdaya saing. Okay, then conclusive. You need to repeat again your isi utama. What is the isi utama? Ibu bapa mengasah daya kreativiti dan inovasi. Okay. So lastly, you can say, in short, tegasnya, ibu bapa dan ni tu, spare up the times in order to melatih daya kreativiti dan inovasi mereka. Full stop. Okay, so this is the SHYEK. Ask yourself a question regarding the technique and then to answer it. Your answers would be your easy already. The huraian or that. This is the easy or this here is the huraian. So basically, uh, for the conclusive, right, because I know some of the school teachers that quite emphasize on the ayat penegas, okay, which is to emphasize again on the easy. This is the same as the ayat penegas, okay? This is the same as the ayat penegas. So take a picture, I give you five seconds. Anything you want to clarify, ask me in the chat box. Five, four, three, two, one. Chang chang. Okay, let's move on. Good, continue. Can I still alive, uh, guys? Wait, oh, one hour pass already, so fast one. All right, let me tell you about the penutup. So for the EC, uh, I will just show you one complete EC by using the techniques because the main point is I want you to know how to apply for the SHYDK. So right now, look at the penutup. Okay, so this is the penutup. Penutup KCH. Normally in class, I always teach my students about the CHCH Charangan Tarapan track. Why right now I will add on and emphasize on this K? It is because every time I notice that when I never tell them about the K, that was really just start up with the chatterbots. Because this is a conclusion, you know, guys. So if it's a conclusion, 
Meaning to say the first sentence, you will need to give a conclude. You need to conclude on the topic first. Okay, this is conclusion. Ma. So the first sentence is ayat conclusive untuk topic law. And what is the topic here? Daya creativity dan inovasi. Ma. So what happened? Okay, so for the first sentence, kesimpulannya, then you say about the daya creativity dan inovasi. Ya. Memang tidak dapat kita nafikan, we couldn't deny that pendidikan tentang daya kreativiti dan inovasi amat penting dalam kalangan murid. So, we mentioned already. Ya. Okay, we mentioned the topic already. Ya. Why? Because directly, kerana secara langsung akan memberikan impak yang besar kepada pembangunan negara. Directly, this pendidikan, this education regarding the daya kreativiti, it will bring the huge impact directly to the country development. Correct word. If your I mean, like if the kids know today they got no dire creativity that innovate, when they grow up, they will become the future pillars of the countries, right? Meaning to say, the peoples in the societies they are getting worse and worse. Then how are your country supposed to be improved? Okay, so you need to link like this up. Huh? Then cadangan and harapan. Cadangan is means suggestions. Okay, teacher. Then you see, ah, uh, our topic. I mean, like our kata kunci is usaha usaha ma. So cadangan is actually one of the synonym word. We need to say we are giving out um, the point again. Uh. No, because in the SHYEK, you will give a main point and then you will explain in details. But for this C and H, you give a general statement and touch and go. What does this mean? Cadangan, you give a suggestion because you hope that that would improve. That's why you will always pair with the harapan's kesan positive. And whenever you give cadangan, you give on a suggestion. For sure, you give on a living thing suggestions, right? Which is a wata, character. Takkan you give a telephone bimbit suggestions. What? You tell this telephone bimbits what they need to do. Huh? Do you think that the telephone bimbits will listen to you? Huh? If yes, then you better go and visit the doctor. Huh? Okay, my dear. So, wata diperlukan. <laughs> wata diperlukan. Wata. Who is the wata? Remember, I give you the pyramid just now. Yes, you may get the wata from there. Then look at this one over here. I just write what? Semua pihak, everyone. They need to bekerja sama, which means berganding bahu, bekerja sama. In order to target the targets of what? Melahirkan murid berkreativiti dan berinovasi. This is your topics, remember? Dapat diberalisasikan. Okay. Then the next one. Pihak sekolah. They would also need to focus on the education regarding Daya creativity is that innovacy, so that the students diberikan peluang. Peluang is means chance. They are giving the chance to understand deeply, mendalami all the activities and the knowledge that is relevant to daya creativity dan daya innovasi. Okay, so you know, you will notice that uh, for the penutup cadangan and harapan, I will always suggest my students to give two cadangan and then two harapan. Because this is a long essay, Karangan's Umu, you need to hit up to 300 and 350 words. Remember that one is your standards. Please do not write at 220 and then you stop. Uh, your standards by right need to get up a bit until 300 and 350. Uh. Okay, then you see. Chadangan and Harapan, you can split it. Ayat Chadangan, Ayat Harapan, no problems. But like my patterns, I will combine them by using the kata hubung. So what is the kata hubung that you can use in order to combine the cadangan and harapan? Not just agar, you may use another term. Let me give it to you. That is agar. Supaya. Demi. Untuk. Bagi. Kerana also can. Okay. You may use all these terms to combine your chanangan and harapan. All right. Guys, you may take a picture for this one. Are you guys still alive? Do you need a three minutes break? Like go to toilet, get some drinks, or maybe wash your face. Do you need it? Whoa, he should say no need to. Whoa, Adrian's also come by. Hi, oh, very good. Wait, Fiona, don't let. No, no, so. Okay, then we just. Finish up maybe after that. Okay, we try to finish up a bit. Try lah. Because just now my mentoring conducted one, I also um, I use them 10 minutes more for that. 
Okay, I try, I try. Uh. So for this one, take picture, uh, can I? Uh? All right. Regarding your kertas dua, short essay and a long essay, anything you want to clarify, anything you want to ask or not. If don't have, then I move on to the kertas satu with you. I give you five seconds for that. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, we we'll stop. I try and see, but I don't think I can ask you or not. Because just now the class, it should end at 3, but I end at 3.10. <laughs> so sorry. Okay, so move on up. Look at your kertas satu. Kertas satu, okay, this one I will not go through with you. Are A, B, C, D, nah, don't tell me tempa. Ah, later I tempa you, I tell you. Okay, so for this one, kertas satu, you may try it and then to get the answers from the QR codes. But if there is anything you don't understand, and then you need more explanations, please text me through this number. And then when you text me, please tell me who are you. If you are my assisting students, whether you are physical or online, tell me which form and then which class, okay? If you are the online students and also the seminar students, then you tell me lah. All right, okay. Uh, one thing, let me do a very quick service for that. Is there any non-TTC students here? Because I see the names is quite familiar, some of it, lah, not everyone. Is there any non-TTC students here? Or not my students? If yes, you give me some signal, lah, okay? All right, then let's move on. Move on to the next one. So, Kerta Satu, you do yourself, ah. Huh? And then, how are you going to get improved in the MR? Oh, okay. You're using your dad's or your mom's, I mean like your mom, account? Okay, for this kind of question, uh, question seven, oh, question seven and also question eight, then I will just call you Jim Wenla, my dear. Because I see this, mm -hmm. okay, question seven and question eight are, uh, this kind of questions, right, whenever you choose for your answer, then the kesalahan, the wrong ones, try to do the promoter line. If you really want to improve, not just about you choose the correct answer, then finish up story, no. Whenever this kind of questions, you will need to think of the promoter line. If you're able to write out the promoter line, then congratulations, you are in the pathway of improving your PM. If you just stop at, okay, I got the answer already, full stop, gg.com. Because when you go to SPM levels, Dialogue. Nah, questions like 11 and 12 also the same. Huh? You need to find out what is the kesalahan and then do the pembetola. If you don't know, then you ask. Okay, flip, flip, flip. I want to go to the bahagian B. This is page 13. Okay, look at page 13. Huh? For the system bahasa, let me go through with you. For the subjective questions, I will go through the B and the C with you. Okay. Okay, look at this one. What is really important, please, every time, read the arahan. Arahan, because over here, terdapat satu kesalahan bahasa, lepas tu, they ask you to gariskan kesalahan bahasa. Tulis jawapan, yang betul pada rang jawapan, and then, tidak perlu menyalin ayat itu semula. If you recopy the sentence, very obvious that you never read the instruction. Okay, so, kedua mempelai kelihatan sama cantik. Mempelai, it means pengantik. Sama dengan pengantik. What is the meaning of pengantik? It means like the, the bride and the group. Kelihatan sama cantik. Very pretty, very handsome. Dan sangat sepadat. Sepadat, it means like very match to each other. Ketiga bersanding. Bersanding, it means they just sit next to each other. Okay? Bersanding, it means they just sit next to each other. Di atas pelamin. Pelamin ialah uh, tempat duduk pengantin. Okay? In which where the breaths and also the group, they will sit. Especially when you go to our Malay friends, the wedding, then uh, the places, the parts for the Pengantin that sit on is very pretty with all the decors like flowers and the chairs, everything is very nice. And then the place is only like for, for the couple to sit only. This is Palamit. 
sehingga tetamu terbegut terbegut is like very shock. So for this one, what is wrong? You need to underline uh, kedua is wrong because kedua is means second. And then right now you wanted to mention these two person. Kedua dua. Then in exam, this is how you should answer. Uh. Next, ayam ayam itu akan dikurung dan diberi makan sebelum mereka disembelih. Disembelih is like being chopped. Okay. Untuk dijadikan jada kenduri kesyukuran. Jada, they got two meanings. It can be like the kuih mui. Okay, kuih mui the dessert. It can also be makanan, the food. Kenduri is the majlis. Kenduri kesyukuran. Over here. Very obvious, mereka is wrong. Okay, why? Uh, do you still remember when we learned about the kata nama in class? I told you that for kata nama, you will have kata ganti nama diri. Pertama, kedua, and also ketiga, right? So, mereka is under ketiga. But regardless which category it's in, kata ganti nama diri, it can only be used to describe human. And also refers to human. This is for humans or orang sahaja. If it's not humans, then you cannot use the kata ganti nama diri. Meaning to say, Meaning to say for this one, you cannot write miracle. You need to change it to ayam ayam itu. Okay, ayam ayam itu akan dikurung dan diberi makan sebelum ayam ayam itu disembelih untuk dijadikan juara kenduri kesyukuran. Can I? All right, then the next one. This one's very easy. Satu kesalahan ejaan ask you to gariskan tulis. Tidak perlu menyalip. Yes. Um, kedua-kedua, no. Kedua-kedua, it will be a big letter. And then, ayam-ayam, yes. Why, ah? Uh? Why, ah? Uh? Ayam-ayam, yes, ah? Uh? It is because that... Over here. Okay? Mereka also small letter. If you write its capital letter, then it will become like kata nama khas or maybe it is at the beginning of a sentence. Ah. Cannot. Ayam near the near here, you refers to who? Right? Ayam near the here, you refers to who? They never mentions anyone here. What? So the near cannot. Here, langsung tak boleh. Why? Because, guys, I know that you were confused for this one. Here is basically kata singkatan of dear. And dear can only be used for orang sahaja. I know that in primary school, you might use dear to refer to like binatang object but actually no it can only be referred to human okay only human unless you look at the story your concepts the Japan the prosa maybe they will use year to refer to the animals but when you write karangan cannot okay when you write karangan cannot it can only be used for human that's why you need to change to I am I am itu remember uh, this is all the Tata Bahasa uh. all right then the next one what is wrong here? Sejak Ahmad pula ke kampung kerana di bawah kerja dia sering berpoya-poya is wrong because we got only berfoya-poya. Berfoya-poya it means menghabiskan masa dan wang tanpa memikirkan kesan negatifnya. Menghabiskan masa dan wang. That's the meaning. In exam, you just write out the correct answer. Go do. Alright, next one. Setiap keputusan yang telah dibuat oleh para panel, which is the judges, akhir pertandingan pidato antarabangsa pada hari ini adalah muktamad kesalahan ejaan. It should be mukta and ed. For this one, muktamad it means that it's final. It's a finalized decision. It cannot be changed, cannot be amended anymore. So this is a final decision. Cannot be changed, cannot be amended anymore. It means muktamat. Okay, this term. Uh. After that, the crew, this one is a person name. Germa mencari pendapatan sampingan, extra income. Sebagai agent's product. Okay, the correct spellings of agents is E. Because this agent is refers to humans. Vakil penjab. Like your insurance agent. And then the agent start with A, this one, 
is referred to some things that add in in the process. For example, when you carry out experiments, you add in some things and then it will give you some reaction. This is for a process, okay? When you are doing the experiment, then we would say the A. Okay, so this is the kesalahan, ejaan, kesalahan bahasa. This is just like a break times for you lah. Then next one. Next one, I will teach us about the techniques whenever you are answering for pemahaman question. Every time when you're answering for pemahaman question, first thing first is not to read through the bahan first up. First thing first is to read through the questions first. After you read the question, then only you come back to the bahan, come back to the pertikan. So flip to the next page. Ada tiga bahan. Okay. I will teach you about the techniques, but it's not really go through with you on the bahan. Okay. The first one. Berdasarkan bahan satu dan bahan dua, niatkan keadaan warga emas semasa usia tua. Warga emas is mean the senior citizen. The really told you berdasarkan bahan, it means that according to based on the materials given. So you are able to get the answers from the material. Niatkan, it means to list, list down only. Okay, so for this one, how are you going to answer? You need to provide a full sentence. Uh. You need to write in a full sentence and not just direct start with, okay, the answer finished. This one will be ayat tergantung already. Berdasarkan bahan satu dan bahan dua, keadaan warga emas semasa usia tua, everything's copied down, that includes termasuklah. Termasuklah, it means like includes what? Okay, termasuklah what happens. All right, teacher, can I start up with like berdasarkan bahan satu dan dua, bahan dua keadaan warga emas semasa usia tua, yelah, adalah. Can I use yelah and adalah for this one? I cannot say you are wrong, but then you need to remember one thing. Yelah and adalah, we call them as kata pemeri, the jenis kata, huh? we have two. And then, if you want to use Yela, you need to take note that Yela can only be used by the kata nama. Yela tempat apa? Yela kita apa? It must be kata nama after Yela. Then, if it's adalah, it can be kata sendi or kata adjective. Adalah untuk menjaga, adalah cantik, adalah bersah. This one is adalah. Your teachers will be very particular on Yela because Yela can only be used for kata nama. But do you notice that there is no kata kerja? What if I need to start up a sentence like menjaga kesehatan? Teacher, then how? I use yelah menjaga kesehatan for sure and definitely your teachers will deduct your mark because yelah can only be kata nama. That teacher, then adalah menjaga kesehatan? Is there any kata kerja after adalah? No, but your teachers will accept there will be quite linear and also in general they will accept kata kerja after adalah but they will not accept kata kerja after yelah. So in order to avoid all these confusions and avoid the risk that your teachers might deduct your marks, that's why I give you this term, termasuklah. Because whatever, apa-apa jenis kata kamu boleh guna selepas termasuklah. No matter it's an adjective, sendi, nama, kerja, whatsoever, it can be used. That's why I give you termaksudlah. Includes and involve words. Okay? If you want to use yelah and adalah, please take notes. Ah. Please take notes for that. Can I? Okay. Then for this one. That is just too much and they ask you to niatakan, then you just take what happens. Do not need to explain anything. You just take because niatakan, list out. Okay, question two. Question two, they ask you to jelaskan dua nilai yang, ter, yang dapat dikena pasti dalam bahan tiga. Dikena pasti dalam bahan tiga, which means what? Which means you will be able to get the information from the bahan tigas, right? So, also berdasarkan Pertikats, you can get the answer. Okay, no, teacher, I just list out the two nilai and finish. No. Tiga maka, it means that you will need to list out the nilai and then to provide the example in which part. Which parts you see that this nilai show? 
Okay, so for the nilai, you will get one mark. Chantos, you will get 0 0.5 marks. Two nilai, two chantos, in total three marks. Because the term they use is jelaskan. They ask you explain and not to say niatakan, not to waste, but you need to explain with example. Okay, I will provide you the answer here because I want you to know how the marks be calculated. Huh? Same things here, when you answer, dua nilai yang dapat, Dikena pasti dalam bahan tiga. Termaksudlah. This is the answers you may get in the bahan tiga. Okay. So how the marks being calculated? Termaksudlah bertanggungjawab. One mark, and then this one is the chanto, 0.5. Nilai seterusnya ialah, use the penanda wacana, patriotisme, one mark, and then this is a chanto, 0.5 mark. And how do I know there is pertanggungjawab, and how do I know there is patriotisme? Okay, bahan tiga, right? This is the bahan tiga. Warga tu teras, teras is means the core. Core values, okay, or the core person. Masyarakat hidup lama penuh jasa setiap pada negara. Didik anak dan cucu. Didik is like mendidik to provide them with education. So this is bertanggungjawab. Then the next one. Penuh ranjau. Ranjau is the mind. Boom, that one. Okay, dan rintangan. Rintangan is means obstacles. Untuk kemerdekaan. Lama sudah kau hidup teruji, penuh ranjau. Jauh dan rintangan untuk kemerdekaan. Okay, it means patriotisme. Although it is a lot of obstacles, a lot of cabaran, but they will still go through just for the kemerdekaan. So this is how I see the nilai here. One and two, the example given. Bertanggungjawab because of mendidik over here. Patriotisme because of mempertahankan negara untuk mencapai kemerdekaan. So this is how you get the full marks. Three marks for this question. This is how we do the pemahaman part of. Okay. Then question three. Question three is about key parts. Every time question three is your pendapat. Can I? You take a picture already. Yeah? So I move on up. Okay, move on. Pada pendapat anda, okay, pada pendapat anda. So for pendapat, which means like kebat, this is a kebat question. If it's for kebat questions, how you should answer? Apakah sumbangan, what is the contributions can be given or by this citizen towards the society? This one you need to think of yourself because they want to test your knowledge. Okay, how are you going to think? Formats, usually if it's formats, meaning to say you will need to give EC, the word EC, not just to give the point, you need to explain by using supaya agak kerana untuk demi bagi or disturb. Give easy and also give the explanation. So how do we do this kind of question? Same things over here. Pada pendapat saya, sumbangan yang boleh diberikan oleh warga emas terhadap syarik, terhadap masyarakat, Okay, what is this? Memberikan pengajaran kepada masyarakat. This is the isi. Kerana warga tua telah mengharungi banyak cabaran hidup. They have go through a lot of challenge. Maka dalam menjadikan the picture. Menjadikan mereka golongan yang lebih berpengetahuan dan berpengalaman. So this is the furayat. Selain itu, use penanda wacana. This is the second easy. There can be the tenaga pakar professional. Why? Because the ilmus and the experience that they have is like very treasure to us. They have a real life experience. So basically, you will get one mark here. 
one marks for Huraian, one marks for another EC, and that's another Huraian. One, two, three, four. In total, four marks settled. So this is how we do Kebab question. You will need to first have an EC and then have the Huraian. Can? Okay, if you okay with the Kebab questions, then go on with the novel. Novels I wanted to show you is the sentence that you must include whenever you are answering for novel question. Up until here, can you still follow? Can you still understand? Yeah, okay, let's continue and let's move on. Next one. So for the novella, novels, you will have four questions to choose because like each zone, they will have different novels. So for example, Tawana Commander Concasus, this is the novel for zones, Vilaya Persecut 1, Selangos, and also uh, Nilai Putra Jayat. And then the rest that might be different. So just like just now for the class, I have one student for Pahang. Pahang is the chart. Number two. So this one, hendaklah berdasarkan satu novel yang, terdap, yang telah anda kaji. Okay, this is just maklumat tambahan. This is soalan. Berdasarkan sebuah novel yang anda pelajari, nyatakan watak utama tiga persoalan, 10 marks. Okay, what is this really important here is that you will need to include the names of the novels and also the author's names of the novel. Because if you never write the sentence out, then your teachers will, there is a probability and your teacher have the rights not to give you any single marks for this part because they already mentioned berdasarkan sebuah novel yang anda pelajari. So this sentence is a compulsory. This one is very important. To write out the novel name and also the this is very, very important. That only you start out the questions. And also, please remember, you will need to give peristiwa and contoh. Not to just say, like, watak utama, can. Just list out who is the watak utama. Who raikan tiga perwatakan. You need to explain what is the perwatakan. So, orang yang bertanggung jawab. Why is it bertanggung jawab? From which scenes? Which incidents? Yang mana itu? Peristiwa yang menunjukkan watak utama ni sangat bertanggungjawab. Okay, you need to provide example. Contoh peristiwa. Okay, this is the novel. Can I remember the sentence? Huh? Very important. Okay, guys. Last part already. Okay, last 30 minutes we go through on the section C, which is your ulasan and the ringkasan. All right, for your ulasans, right, I will go through with you on the techniques and what parts you need to take notes on it. Then for the ringkasans, I will teach you, of course, I will tell you whatever you need to note. And then we'll go through one round on why is this an EC and why is this not an EC. Okay. You can do that. <laughs> All right. For this one up, bahagian C. Bahagian C ulasan. Ulasan within 80 to 100 words. Okay. Then, if it's for ulasan, how many paragraphs you need to write? For ulasan, it's either one or three paragraph. Satu ataupun tiga perengan. It still need to depend on your teachers. Huh? But same thing, you will always start with a pengenalan. Then isi. Then penutup. Okay. One thing is different here for your EC, just now like I mentioned, you will have two EC, EC Tesurat, and the next one is EC Tesirat. What is the difference of EC Tesurat and EC Tesirat? Reminder, EC Tesurat is all the points given, okay? Informasi yang diberikan dalam soalan, maklumat yang diberikan dalam soalan, so why this one so ugly? And then isi tersirat is your own idea, idea sendiri. And then guys, for ulasan, yes, correct. Yes, exactly. So for ulasan, please remember, tersirat is a compulsory, okay? This is compulsory. Your ulasan is 15 marks. If you never write out the isi tersirat, 
then your marks will not get higher than five. Okay? You will not get higher than five if you never write out EC Thursday, right? Five out of 15 now. Huh? And then five is the highest that you could get. So please remember, you must include the EC Thursday, right? In your essay. Okay? Then, the next thing, what you need to take note is, you see, I got so many EC Thursday, right? Here. And then I need to include my EC Thursday, right? Then how am I going to combine all the EC EC together? You will need to use Prananda Wat Chana. And please remember, Prananda Wat Chana, if your all the EC test right, test right is still relevant to your question, and then you got use a Prananda Wat Chana and you use it correctly, then congratulations, your Ulasan's will at the range of nine marks and above, provided you use the Penanda Wachana correctly and also the EC is relevant. Okay, Penanda Wachana, it can help you to boost up your marks, but then you need to use it correctly. So right now, let me tell you a few Penanda Wachana that you should avoid, not in Ulasan, not in any Karaman. This is the three terms that you will need to exclude and also avoid. Why? Antara, antara, it means among, right? So you see, uh, if you start up your paragraph with antara, antara is your first sentence. Before antara, you got nothing. Then your near refers to who, my dear? Your near refers to who? It's very weird. So this is Kesalahan Dr. Bahasa. So actually, in the SPM examiners, they have an argument regarding this. I know some of you might feel confused because last time you always use system and even your school teachers they might teach you, especially in a primary school. But as we as I mean, I have this kind of argument. So what happened is I will ask my student to avoid. Because if you're used to it, when it's come to SPM, you will still used to it. So avoid starting right now. And that's for Acunia. Acunia, it means lastly. You will only use Acunia in two situations. Whenever you are telling a story, Story, you will always have a beginning and then ending is what. Well. That's why you can use Akunia. Or when you are giving out a speech, okay, before you walk off from the stage, then you can also use Akunia to comfort everything. So for Akunia, we will only use in Charita or Sharahan. Sharahan Uchapan. Can I other than that avoid? Then Akusakali. Later, I tell you. Then, Akhil Sekali. Akhil Sekali is if you are telling me that your karangan is writing about cara penyediaan. Cara penyediaan juice or ring. So, you will have langkah pertama, langkah kedua, langkah ketiga. Then, the last step. Okay? Last step is Akhil Sekali. But, you are not writing langkah-langkah things here. The langkah-langkah is really like step one, step two, step three. Huh? It's not a method. Huh? So, if you are writing cara penyediaan sesuai itu, Last step, you use Akhil Sekali, accept it. Other than that, no. Unless your school teachers tell you, if you never include Antaranya, you never write Akhil Sekali as your last point, I will give you wrong. I will deduct your mark. Then you follow their methods. Because I really got one student. Um, it's a she she comes to me and then say that the teachers members request them to write Akhil Sekali for the last points in the ULA side. I only got that one student only. Okay? If your teachers never tell you anything like this, avoid all this. So, if you wanted to write like the last point, last point for your ulasan, you may use the simple linear, conclusive, tegas near, tuntas near, okay, or this term. You may use pernanda what channels for easy, what later I will give you in the ringkasan. Selain itu, seterusnya, di samping itu, all this you can use. Just this three, avoid. Please do not include this in ulasans and not even in any of the karangan. Okay? Cannot clear. So we move on to the next one. So basically, this is what these things that you need to know for the ulasan. Lah. Okay? All right. I will not go through the entire parts for the ulasans with you due to the time constraint. So you can refer to the easy Thursday right in the, uh, in the answers given because we got split it out. What is the easy test right and what is the easy test right? So you may refer to the answer sheet. 
still clear? If yes, let's move on and look at the ring cluster. All right. For ring cluster, this is very easy because in the questions itself, they already mentioned to you what is the points that want. But the only one thing is that students will make careless mistakes. Okay. So for this part, your ring cousin, it is like a summary. Ring cousin about what? This is the tajo. Why is this a tajo? Because I already told you, you will have a kata kunci and also the topic. Okay, and also the topic. So these are combinations of your kata kunci and also the combinations of your topic. Okay, clear. And then how many words? It's like this. This is the word limit for done. Let me tell you one thing. Okay. Basically, this is what will be given in the exams in the questions itself. But when it's come to ring questions, right? Okay. How many paragraphs you need to write for that? It's one paragraph only. And then in this one paragraph for ring kasana, yes, Kisha, you will only have easy. You got no Furayans and you got no Chanto. No explanations, no example. It is only the point. And then, how many words for that? Pata Prakataan. Teachers, the, the question already told us words 80 to 100 words. Yes, correct, Kian. Actually, that is two. Uh, it's either same and not. More than 100, uh, more than 80. Okay. Or, huh? Fiona, what does this mean? Three, three paragraph. Uh. Then for this one, it's within 80 to 100. So that is two pattern. Uh. Seriously? Your teacher's confused on the on the ulasan and also vinkasan is it? Yeah, if it's three paragraph, then we'll minus one, uh, bro. Because uh, why is this ulasan will split into three? Because we'll have the pengenalan, isti, and also the penutup. Vinkasan, we got only point, my dear. No opening, no ending. No hurayat, no chanto. That's why only one paragraph. Hey, bro. I mean, like, I, 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 I think you need to clarify with your teacher. Eh? Okay, I got one student tell me that the school told them that Vinkasan three paragraph, Ulasan one paragraph. Deal. I think you better go and clarify with the school teacher. Okay. If they say it's like Vinkasan three paragraph, you ask your teacher how to write Vinkasan in three paragraph. Uh, you pretend innocent, innocent a bit, bodo, bodo a bit, and ask your teachers for that. Uh. I'm also very curious how is a Vinkasan with three paragraph? Uh? You go and ask. Then you tell me if it's really three, uh, then you tell me how. Okay, so please remember, uh, guys, ringkasan is only one paragraph. Uh, and then how many pata perkataan? This one, please take notes. Uh, depends on the question. So you must read the arahan, okay? Then after that, tajuts would be given. So you already know. <laughs> okay, yeah. So you already know what you need to find for that. And that's how many points you need to write for that. Usually, in the schema, they would tell you five, but I would like to tell you five to six minimum. If can stick to six paragraph, why? Rinkasan is a 15 marks question, right? Okay, and this 15 marks, it was split into two, 10 marks for your EC, five marks is the Bahasa. And then how are you going to get all 10 marks for the EC? One EC equals to two marks. So you will need to have five EC, like five times two, simple mathematics equals to 10. Okay, but I have a real life situation, real, real key scenario here. Okay, that's my from three students last year. This year is from four. Lah. And it is it, actually a Kajang student. Ah. What happened is <laughs> his ring cousins basically is he got five points, and all these five points is correct. So by right, the marks the easy, he could get all 10 marks, but the teachers don't want to give all 10. 
the teacher just give eight marks. The reason is because the teacher say, I want you to include six ECs in your ringkasan. Because the particulars, which is like the questions, give you like six. It give you like eight. Is it eight? More than six, I remember. So you need to write six EC. Although my students got all five ECs correct, but the teachers insist only give eight points. I'm mean, like eight marks for that. So I will suggest you to write six, okay? But please make sure all six, you are you can fit in the words limit, okay? You can fit in the words limit. This is the things that you need to take notes. So minimum five to six, right? Unless your teachers is okay. Unless your teachers say, five, my dears, schema, I already told you five. That is five. Ah, your teachers follow the schema, then can. But if your teachers is kind of so cute, I would use the word cute to describe, ah, then yes. Okay, please follow that, but then remember the word limit. All right. Then the next thing, what you need to take note is, I already told you that your ringkasan that is only easy. No hurayan, no chanto. That you need to write five to six easy, and then there is only one paragraph. How are you going to combine all the easy together? Penanda wacana, because satu easy, Satu ayat sahaja. Okay, satu isi satu ayat. Jadi kamu perlu menggunakan penanda wacana and this is how you secure your bahasa marks as well. I will give you seven penanda wacana in which this penanda wacana it is used for isi only because you see, we got no hurayans for ringkasan. So if you write the penanda wacana like just the root, just the root it means only itu. Just the root only itu or this term is used to describe. I mean, like not to say describe, it's used to elaborate further explanation. Tamsiunya, contohnya, misalnya, lagi susah. Yang ni semua untuk contoh. Tetapi ringkasan kamu tak ada contoh. Langsung tak ada. Hanya ada isi saja. So, break this down. Huh? Penanda wacana for your isi, what do we have? Okay, the first one, selain itu. Second one, seterusnya. The third one, selanjutnya. And then number four, tambahan pula. And then number five, tambahan lagi. And then number six, bukan itu sahaja. Number seven, is something itu. Yes, Kaylee, correct. Like, just now remember when I do the current questions, I write to use all the synonym. That's the reason. Yeah, whenever you see that, you know that would be the points already. That's the reason. Yeah, just look, we look at the, we look at the questions later. Huh? Although the question is the right usaha usaha, but then you will notice that they use charas in the petikan. They use the terms charas in the petikan. Then you will know this is actually the point. Okay? So this is the ECs for the penanda wacana. I mean like easy for the This is the penanda wacana for easy. <laughs> what am I talking about? Okay, let's continue. <laughs> Let's continue. Okay, uh, so basically, this is all the things that you need to know for the ringkasan. Uh. Remember to read the question. Uh. The arahan is very important. Uh. All right, next one. Okay, one last part, guys. Let's move on. So the one last part, we go through the questions together, and then we identify why is this an easy, why is this not an easy. Okay, anything, please ask me, clarify with me in the chat box. Okay, all right, let's move on. The first one, 
Pengalaman bertutur dalam bahasa Inggeris adalah salah satu bahagian yang paling menyeronokkan dan menjadikan seseorang itu mempunyai keyakinan diri is a confidence up yang lebih tinggi. So this is not a point definitely. This is just a pengenalan introduction. We need to fight usaha-usaha in order to increase and enhance bahasa Inggeris. Keperluan kemahiran bahasa kedua kini sangat penting dalam persaingan the competitions pasaran kerja yang semakin kompetitif. This is just for Ryan. Terdapat pelbagai cara, usaha punya sinonim cara untuk seseorang meningkatkan penguasaan bahasa Inggeris. They just tell you that there is a lot of ways, varieties way but they never mentions what is the way. Okay, so this is not. Kerap bertutur dengan seramai mungkin individu lain dalam bahasa Inggeris. Kerap bertutur, it means like often. Always, always talk with others, as much people as you can in English. Dapat meningkatkan kemahiran ini. They already told you, like this, it can help you to increase already, right? Okay, so this is the first usaha. Then the next one. Lebih banyak berlatih bertutur dalam bahasa Inggeris, lebih cepat penguasaannya kerana ke, kerana kemahiran pengucapan ini adalah seperti okay kerana we used to explain right for rakyat. Selain itu, did you see? Remember what I told you? This is the penanda wacanas for easy. Telefon pintar yang dimiliki menjadi alat yang sangat efektif untuk pembelajaran bahasa. So this is the second point. Remember the technique I told you up? Okay, after that, it mentions telefon pintar boleh digunakan untuk merakam, untuk merakam explanations. They tell you that what is this telefon pintar you can be used for. Bagi menambah kosa kata, in order to increase the kosa kata, okay, seseorang itu boleh mendengar berita dan lagu-lagu dalam bahasa English. So, this is the third point. Malahan, it means like more overs like that, even dapat mendengar sebutan perkataan. This one is the explanation. Uraian. Seseorang itu akan lebih mudah meniru cara percakapan dan sebutan yang betul, this is what, this is the explanation by telling you that, okay, if we always listen to the songs and the news in English, then what happened? Pembacaan apa dan majalah dalam bahasa Inggeris juga menjadi antara usaha berkesan yang boleh dilakukan. So, they already told you, this is one of the ways. Next. Hubungan melalui jaringan media sosial, social network bersama rakan dari negara lain juga dapat melatih penguasaan perbahasan English. Dapat melatih. Okay, so this is also one of it. Bagi melancarkan komunikasi, in order to make the communications more fluent, isi perbualan adalah tentang what is the contents that about the conversation? So they give you some example. This is contoh. Pada masa yang sama, perdebatan tentang isu, isu-isu semasa yang hangat diperkatakan dalam bahasa English juga antara cara yang berkesan. Cara is also a circle. So this is one of it. Seseorang itu Boleh juga menyertai kursus yang diminatinya yang menggunakan bahasa Inggeris sebagai medium komunikasi seperti kursus masakan. So this is also one of it. Because this is not the Huraian for the previous one. So menyertai kursus yang diminati menggunakan bahasa Inggeris. Sebagai blah blah blah, this is explanations already. So how many points you have? One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Includes all seven. This is how we do. Very fast, right? Okay. So the next one, the last one, is I wanted to show you how you should do that. You just copy and paste 
everything's highlighted in this template. This template is for all the ulas, uh, all the ringkasan. And then after you done, please remember one last thing is how many words, prata perkataan. Although I give you five easy, uh, if can, then you fit in all six easy. Uh. I mean like if can, you fit in all six easy because five easy is like according to the schema. But I told you the real life situations already. Ma. So to be safe, if can, write six easy in it. But then you need to fit in some words limits. Okay. And also, antara after antara cannot have kata ganda. Uh. So antara usaha yang, eh, antara usaha meningkatkan, cannot usaha usaha. Uh. Penanda wacana isi. Yes, just put in penanda wacana isi then done. You need to make sure the sentence is smooth. Meaning to say, don't start up with the penanda, uh, don't start up with the kata kerja. Like, seterusnya, menjaga kesihatan. No, siapa menjaga kesihatan? You need to have a subject. The watak, remember? Make sure that your sentence is smooth. It's a complete sentence, not ayat tergantung. And then, one last thing. Do you need to change the words for your ringkasan? Look back to the question now. The question that mentions under digalakat. What is the meaning of digalakat? Encourage. Okay, digalakat, it means encourage. Encourage means that if you never do it, it is still correct. It just encourages you to do so. But if they change the terms into diwajikan, that is different. Diwajikan it means compulsory. If you never do it, you never follow the instruction, then you are wrong. This is diwajikan. Okay? So diwajikan and digalakan is different. If they use diwajikan, it means you die, die need to follow the instructions or else you will be deducted. Okay? But digalakan is just encourage. Huh? You do or you never do, also correct. It's just that they encourage you to do so. Okay, so this is how we do the ringkasan. Ringkasan is very easy. Beware of the careless mistakes, my dear. So right now, if you have anything regarding today's seminars and any questions you want to clarify, you are welcome to clarify in the chat box. So I will end my seminar here today. Thank you so much, guys, and stay with me for so long. Okay, see you when I see you up. Bye-bye.